All right, ladies and gents, welcome, welcome, welcome back to yet another Blu-ray collection update video here on CM42 TV. Thank you ever so much for joining us this time. It really means a lot to me, man. It really, really does. Right, here's the deal. It's just been the summertime, as a lot of you know. Pretty much all of you probably know that. And, uh, you know, summertime is either a really good month for me in terms of buying and, and, and obtaining lots of movies on Blu-ray or DVD or just in the collection in general. However, this one for 2019 has not been the case. It's been a rather quiet month for me buying Blu-rays and DVDs and movies and that sort of thing. It's been a good, you know, couple of months for going to the cinema and, and seeing some films and stuff like that. But in terms of um, buying physical media, it's been very scarce. And that's okay. You know, that's okay for the bank account and for the wallet and all that good stuff. It's not okay in terms of these videos, which I always love doing. This is like my roots here on YouTube, always talking about DVDs and Blu-rays and entertainment in some form is what I've always done here on, on YouTube. So anytime I can, I can run it back and bring it back to the original days of CM42 TV, I'm always happy to do so. However, when it's just one or two things that I buy in a month, it's not really, you know, worth doing a video. However, the summertime, that being, I did one of these for June, so that being July until early September, uh, within that time, I've been on holiday, I've watched a lot of movies, I've done a lot of reaction videos here on the channel, and I've also turned another year older on August 20th was my birthday, so I can show you here today some stuff that I got for my birthday and with some birthday money that I kind of used to buy some new movies today. So let's do it. This is my summertime Blu-ray collection movie update video. However, well, however, we'll get started before we get to the Blu-rays to show you a couple of other things that I got for my birthday. This birthday is one of those ones where it's getting kind of boring now that I'm getting older. There's less fun physical media and there's a lot more just kind of like, um, you know, maybe money and cards, vouchers, smelly stuff. Like I got some uh, Hugo Boss aftershave, which was lovely. Um, some clothes, some clothes including this bad boy right here, this baby right here. This Adam Cole NXT Gold Baby Gold t-shirt, which... My good close personal friend Paul got me for my birthday, which is uh, which is great. One of my favourite t-shirts to wear now. I'll be wearing this in a lot more videos, I'll have you know. So yeah, love that one. I also got this from my lovely little sister. This uh, Mr Bean in his pyjamas Funko Pop. And this one has come out of the box and is proudly sitting with the other ones right behind me. The one that is not out of the box is a, a little sort of late birthday present that I bought myself. Kind of selfish, but I saw it in uh, Forbidden Planet. It was the only one from the New Japan Pro Wrestling set that I didn't have, and I thought if I get it, I'll complete the set, I'll be a happy boy. That is the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes Funko Pop. Uh, so now I have the Cody, I have the Kenny Omega, and I have the Young Bucks 2-pack. I got the Young Bucks 2-pack in Hot Topic, by the way in Orlando, Florida, but this one's really cool. It's the last one that I chose to get in the set because it's probably the most basic, but it's still cool. I love how he's called The American Nightmare Cody because they didn't want to just put Cody on a fucking, uh, on a Funko Pop, but it's got his tattoo that says Dream on his chest. He's got the kind of New Japan tights, so. And he's got his black hair as well, or his, or his brown hair. I like him better with his blonde hair, but that's just me, so that's cool. Got Cody Rhodes, Mr. Bean, and all that lovely stuff for my birthday along with this and the movies. I'm about to show you right now. Here we go. So for you experts on CM42 TV who know all of the videos that I always post, recently I was in London for a quick little trip to visit my good close personal friend Aaron Dockard, who was the original co-host with me on the Good Bit podcast on lots of episodes here. We actually recorded this one when I was in London. Uh, I don't, let's see if I can try and get I'm using my phone for the first time in ages. I bought a new camera. That's another reason. There we go. Where's the camera? Where's the camera? It's over there. Hang on. That's another reason why there's not been as many videos, because I just happened to buy this. I bought my Canon M50 for uh, for my birthday, so that's kind of why, look at the fingerprints on that. That's kind of why, again, there's not been as many um, Blu-rays in the collection, because I spent a good chunk of money on this. So that's been uh, what I've been filming my videos on, but just for the nature, I like the, the way this the phone is set up for this particular location. But uh, yeah, when I was in... Uh, London, we recorded this episode here about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the new Tarantino film. The episode is great, however, the episode is great, the movie's great, the episode's alright, and hopefully you'll find it great. However, I took my um, my older microphone with me to London because it's later and I was flying down, so I didn't want to, you know, um, to take too much, you know, heavy luggage on or whatever. So I took my older mic and I just set it up wrong, I hadn't set it up in about a year, and I just obviously forgot the obvious settings and I recorded it wrong so I'm kind of, I sound kind of far away when I'm literally just behind the microphone but it's kind of just recording the front of the microphone it's weird, Aaron sounds amazing, I sound not great but the episode's fine, it didn't suffer too much when I was in London though and as a part of that vlog that I posted so I posted the, the podcast, two reaction videos with me and Aaron 
and a vlog from my whole time in central London. We went to Chinatown, we went to the um, the National Theatre, we went to the, the River Thames sort of bit. We also visited the BFI and I'll tell you, a film buff, a film fan, a film enthusiast dream is the BFI and if you're in the London area, I can't recommend going enough because the shop is unbelievable. While I was walking about the shop, I, I, I said to myself, this is unbelievable, at least 10 times. I had to buy something. I bought a classic French film because it was on offer. This is Metropolis. I've always loved the look of this Blu-ray. Fritz Lang's Metropolis from 1927, I believe. Yeah, and it's um, apparently revolutionised cinema, changed a lot of things. As you can see, it's still on the case. I've not watched it yet, but it was on sale at the BFI for 11 I thought that's, you know, a fair deal because it's always around 16 quid here. So I thought that's um, a little bit cheaper and also just because I was in the BFI, I thought I might as well try and get something and I've always kind of wanted it. This is reconstructed and restored, 25 minutes of newly found footage plus a new documentary plus a 56 page book and it's part of the Masters of Cinema series. I love the artwork. I was going to try and open it but it looks like it's going to take a little, a little while. I don't want to damage any of it right here on camera because that would be very embarrassing. It's cool, I'll, I'll maybe talk about it in another video and I'll show off the artwork, but you guys will probably know what it looks like. It just looks really cool how it goes sideways and all the information is on the back, kind of like landscape and stuff like that. Um, you know, the holy grail among film fi film finds um, can be seen for the first time in 83 years as the director originally intended, as seen by German cinema goers in 1927. So it was very fascinating, I love, you know, interesting parts of cinema and, and Blu-rays and films and that sort of thing. So I'm kind of on a good kick just now in terms of um, the films I'm watching. I'm kind of into a lot of international cinema, which you'll see here, and um, trying to find some hidden gems and stuff and trying to, broadering, bro trying to broaden my horizons as a film fan. I, mean, I, I put the Blu-rays so far away, I'm trying to reach. This one was an actual birthday present from my sister. This has become one of the films that we have um, watched together and enjoyed together. And this is Pleasantville, one of my favourite, favourite films. Um, very underrated and very unsung. Not a lot of people who have seen this, not a lot of people know of it, and I don't understand why, because it is an absolute classic in my opinion. Came out in 98, but I believe, yeah, 1998. Pleasantville, that's, of course, Tobey Maguire and Reese Witherspoon. is also casts and stars Jeff Daniels, William H. Macy, Joan Allen and J.T. Walsh. Um... It's like kind of an American Blu-ray. I didn't even think this was actually released here in the UK. So it's that really slimline case with the sort of recyclable thing in there that, you know, all the American Blu-rays have, which is kind of a nice kind of, you know, wee addition to the collection, I guess, having a different type of Blu-ray. But it has lots of special features. at the commentary with Gary Ross, who wrote it and directed it. Uh, isolated score. Great score. Great soundtrack in this film. Composed by Randy Newman. Um, it's got... a. Uh, Music video directed by Paul Thomas Anderson and, of course, the original trailer. Plus, the film is just so good and it's going to be great to have on Blu-ray and in high definition and all that good stuff. So, um, if you've not seen this film, I can't recommend checking it out enough. I saw it for the first time in film class when I was in college. Fell in love with it then. Um, watched it myself, then showed my sister it. She really liked it and she went and got, got it for me for my birthday. So, that's a good one. Thanks, sister. Um, I love this one very much and it's a proud a part of my collection. It's basically about two um, very different siblings. The, one of them, Tobey Maguire's character, is very like obsessed with this TV show, Pleasantville. And so, some mad storm happens and this creepy man comes with a magic remote control when he comes to the house. And Tobey Maguire's character and Reese Witherspoon's character, in fact, um, get sucked into the show. And uh, start changing the show and start changing the show's uh, livelihood as they know it. So nothing is as simple as black and white because it's a black and white show, they bring colour into the show. Such a well-made film. Can't recommend it enough. Pleasantville. It's not too long either. It's a very easy watch. Um, very happy to have that in my collection. Now today, these four I picked up today um, just because I had a wee sort of a spending spree. We went into town today just kind of impromptu town trip and an impromptu movie buying experience. I went into Poundland. The intention was to go to Poundland and just buy a couple of Blu-rays from Poundland for the two quid or the one quid that they're on sale for. Ended up uh, going to Poundland and not buying any of them because we'd went to these shops first. We went to CEX. My sister got a DVD in there. El LOL, starring uh, Miley Cyrus. And I picked up these four from FOP, which is rapidly becoming my favourite DVD shop in the world. Uh, the first one, it was literally, I had the, the, you know three in my hand that I was going to go to the till for. And this was standing right at the till, on sale, in the sale section. I thought, I have to go for it. It's a classic film. 
in the clearance. It was six pounds, now it's four pounds, and it is Scarface. Never seen Scarface in my life, can you believe it? I consider myself a film fan, you know, I host a, a YouTube channel that we talk about film a lot. I have a feckin' podcast all about movies, and I've never seen Scarface. So the fact that it was there, I've always wanted that, I've always wanted to see it, I will get to it. But I think, you know, films like this that are so iconic and are so, you know, revealed, you kind of want to see them in the best possible way, you know, so... Uh, the fact I can get it on Blu-ray for such a good price as well, and supporting Fop, I'm just clutching the straws trying to find the reason why I bought this. However, I'm very happy to own it because I'll finally get to it. I know I'll love it. I've seen parts of Scarface before. I've just never seen it in its entirety. So that's going to change now. Scarface for four quid in the cleaning section in Fop. Couldn't really go wrong there. Al Pacino classic. Then, um, as I was saying before, I'm kind of in some form of um, international cinema kick just now. Um, been watching some Japanese films and... Um, some foreign films in general, some subtitled films. So I've been really wanting to check this one out and I saw it in the Asian section in the FOP for a fiver. And it's a DVD, but I don't care. This is Tokyo Story. I've heard this is great. I've heard this is one of the best films ever made. And uh, I'm definitely going to check it out now. You know what? See, since buying this and a couple of other ones that I bought recently on, on DVD, like Seven Samurai and that sort of thing, I think I miss DVDs. You know, Blu-rays are great. You know, we have them in these these beautiful, you know, cases and beautiful pictures on our screen and all these great special features but I don't think anything quite beats a DVD like th th those feelings that you had when you got DVDs I don't even know if they're there for Blu-rays now I don't know maybe I'm just being silly but the fact I've been buying DVDs recently but I just like the fact they're cheaper as well maybe it's because they're bigger I don't know but I just like having the physical copy in my hand of a DVD just kind of miss it I love going to DVD shops and seeing especially because of the BFI that's when I first noticed it because I was in the BFI and like they had all the movies ever, every movie on sale. And it was kind of like there was DVD versions and there was Blu-ray versions. If one movie didn't have a Blu-ray release, it was there on DVD and vice versa. And they were kind of like that. And the DVDs kind of really stood out because obviously they're bigger and they look different. And I was just like, do you know what? DVDs look great. I kind of missed the simplicity of them and just the way they look. So I went and picked up Tokyo Story for a fiver. Looking forward to checking it out since I'm part of this mad kick just now watching international films. It's really good for me as a film fan learning more about things like that. So Tokyo Story, a, a happy addition to my collection for sure. And when I say international cinema, I kind of mean all sorts of generations and all sorts of lines of, of cinema and all sorts of genres and stuff like that. So when I was down in London as well, myself and, and Aaron D were kind of talking about getting into really old films and, and, you know, I've never really sat down and watched like old westerns and, and films that really inspired current cinema. And I love that. I love going back to films like Seven Samurai or Tokyo Story or these things that, in Metropolis, for example, Pleasantville is another one, Rear Window, um, you know, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari and all these, these cinema, um, these films that really just changed and revolutionised cinema. The Matrix is another one. I just saw The Matrix in the cinema. And, you know, the way, like, what you now, it's like we've seen it all, but back in the late 90s, we hadn't seen it all. It's a very weird perspective. I love kind of seeing that and kind of putting a different sort of um, putting put different goggles on and, and watching the films that way. So I went and picked up The Man With No Name trilogy today for a fiver as well. Great deal in FOP. It was five quid with any purchase, uh, or ten pounds normally. The women charged me ten pounds. I had to go back in. It was a mess. But I got it for a fiver eventually. This is, uh, this is a fistful of dollars for a few dollars more and the good, the bad and the ugly. All DVDs are course, as I said. You're not going to get the Blu-rays for a fiver, but the fact, again, they're cheaper, you know what I mean? They might, if you're just looking for the film, you're not, I'm not bothered about the special features right now. I kind of like really old films to kind of look the way they were supposed to look. A wee bit grainy, not perfect. You know, it kind of adds to it, I think, these really slimline cases. There's, uh, for a few dollars more, all Clint Eastwood films directed by uh, Sergio Leone. The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. So, very happy to get these. And, you know, I was thinking, what westerns have I seen? The Hateful Eight. Um, the Magnificent Seven, A Million Ways to Die in the West, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood in some cases, you know, um, and that, I mean, I'm sure I've seen other ones, but the ones that come to my mind right there, you know, I don't know, I don't know, so it's good to get, you know, some classic cinema, again, films that kind of change the game, revolutionise what we see now, these ones are sort of the most well known, so there you go, The Man With No Name trilogy, three films on DVD as part of the Spaghetti Western uh, genre, is that, is that the right way to say it? I don't know. And finally, my God, finally, this is one that I would not have gotten. I would have had a nice, cheap day in town buying Blu-rays and DVDs, but I saw this. I loved the artwork. It was a tenner. 
and that's just the way I um, I picked it up and I was holding it and I was like, this is the way a Blu-ray should look and feel. I have to get it. I've always wanted to see the film and it's Drive, starring Ryan Gosling, who is one of my favourite actors, along with Carrie Mulligan. I've never seen this film. I've always had it on DVD and um, I kind of got it illegally, I think, at one point. It was like burned on a DVD. So I don't like watching films like that. I like watching them the way they were intended, original format, you know, um, and then to support, you know, not only the film, but for the industry, do you know what I mean? Um, so Drive, look how awesome that cover is, look how great the whole set looks. Uh, I love the colours, I love, you know, it sounds daft, but there's art cards in here. Uh, I've always been a fan of, of Ryan Gosling, plus it's a special collector's edition. I'm a collector, I'll get the special edition. So very happy to have this, very excited to finally get to it. I'd love to do some more movie reviews and Blu-ray reviews on the channel, so maybe this is a good one to do that for, just because of the way it's presented, and um, since I'm such a big fan. So there you go, Drive. Very happy to have that in the collection as well. So very successful over the past few months, although it's not loads. Sometimes it's not about loads. Sometimes it's about picking things when you see them and kind of assembling a good selection of films. I think we've done that pretty well here. Along with the Funkos, I've got Cody. Cody Rhodes Funko Pop. And I have the Mr Bean in his pyjamas. Funko Pop, Mr Bean, one of my favourite characters of all time, Rowan Atkinson, arguably my favourite actor ever. Um, and of course I got my new camera, so again that's probably the biggest reason, I totally forgot about that. That's probably the reason why I've not bought anything in terms of, um, or bought much in terms of movies, because I spent a good chunk of money on my lovely Canon M50 that hopefully you've been enjoying the videos on. I'm still kind of figuring it out as we speak, but... And then the new films that I picked up, part of the... It's, not, it's number 16, I didn't mention that. Number 16 of the Masters of Cinema Collection. Metropolis there from the BFI. I got Pleasantville, one of my favourite films for my birthday. Uh, today, Scarface for four quid. Yet to see it, but very excited to check it out. Tokyo Story on DVD for a fiver. Into my uh, international films right now. Along with the Man With No Name trilogy. Fistful of Dollars for a few dollars more. And The Good, The Bad and The Ugly on DVD for a fiver. And for a ten quid out of FOP, the Collector's Special Edition of Drive. Very happy to have all of these films into the collection. They now have a home. Right, folks, thanks very much for watching. I really appreciate you coming in and checking these videos out, especially these ones, because as I said, this is my roots, baby. Back to where I'm back to where I'm, I'm good at. You know, these reaction videos, I'm kind of learning as we go, and I'm enjoying them. It's a fresh kick to the channel. But I always love doing the Blu-ray videos and the movie videos, because that's where I come from, along with the wrestling videos, of course. But until next time, folks, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, please tell a friend, like, like the video, leave a comment if you can, and you can follow me on social media, Twitter and Instagram, at CM42TV. I created a wee Instagram recently, been uh, posting some videos and some pictures and that's on there, some selfies for you. And if you follow me on there, I'll follow you back. We'll have some nice pictures, engagement. That was weird. I don't know why I did that. That kind of um, ruined it, but it's fine. <laughs> Until next time, folks, thanks very much for watching. Stay tuned for more. And I'll see you all next time, baby.